streams. We all love them. The rush, the excitement, the... Wait, 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 wait. These are not the streams I'm talking about. Maybe. Let's go! Now these are the streams I'm talking about. Of course, not everyone who streams will be yelling your ear off, but I love getting to be a part of the hype and genuine excitement a streamer experiences when they clutch a victory. But your favorite streamers might be at risk of losing it all. Within the last month, there has been a surge of streamers reportedly getting banned on Twitch for DMCA violations. Voiboy, Pokimane, and Rizzo are just a few to name who have either commented on the situation or have now fallen victim to Twitch's sudden enforcement of these rules and regulations. This was actually something we touched on in our video covering the career of Squishy. On October 20th of 2020, just a couple weeks ago, Devin Nash tweeted out a response to this whole situation, calling out Twitch for its kind of disrespectful way in which it's handling the situation with its streamers. Nash states, It is insane that Twitch informs partners they deleted their content, and that there is more content in violation despite having no identification system to find out what it is. Their solution to DMCA is for creators to delete their life's work. This is pure, gross negligence. But get this, in just June alone of 2020, the Recording Industry Association of America has issued over 1,800 different copyright infringement notices to Twitch. When previously they'd only ever sent 700 requests over the time span of three whole years. Something's not adding up here. It turns out I was right. You see, Twitch actually does have a license, to some extent, that should allow them and their streamers to play music, despite all these copyright claims we're hearing about. Twitch is actually paying royalties to the performing rights organizations. This kind of a license agreement states a performing right is granted by the U.S. Copyright Act to owners of musical works to license those works for public performance. Such a public performance would surely include streaming, would it not? The problem the RIAA has with Twitch is the fact that they don't have a synchronization license. This license is supposed to pay copyright owners when their music is used in conjunction with visual images like music and films, TV, videos, etc. Instead of just paying for the license, Twitch has resorted to deleting any content on its platform that infringes on copyright material. While it might have been the most cost-effective thing for Twitch, it's pretty much every streamer's nightmare right now. Okay, so let's get let's get to the the TLDR here, okay? Review a recent live stream from Loco even goes to show that maybe that once you delete your content, you're still not safe from getting banned. Injury. And if you have to do that, you should delete your VODs again and your clips again. You should do that again. If you haven't done that yet, you should do that now, yesterday. That being said, it looks like at the moment that even if you do that, you're still not safe, but you should still do it. Before we wrap things up here, I'd like to take a look into a popular theory that discusses what the future of Twitch could be like. Back in 2007, the RIAA went after YouTube for similar reasons that they are now targeting Twitch for. YouTube ultimately allowed the rights owners to earn ad revenue from videos that used their music, or if they so chose, could actually terminate an existing channel for infringing on their rights. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Twitch shifts towards a similar way of organizing their content, in order to reduce the amount of issues and complaints that they get from the RIAA. If you're watching this video and you happen to be a Twitch partner as well, I'd strongly encourage you to begin to save your content now. A lot of streamers have lost their entire life's work and are very frustrated about it. Former co-founder Justin Ignacia actually posts some links on Twitter that you could go and have a third-party app or application of some sort to help download the information that you need. Best of luck to everyone out there streaming currently, and hopefully things get better. If not, I guess we'll all just have to start making music with Boy Boy.